Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Kevin Alas. Uh, I'm a professional uh, basketball player uh, in the Philippines. And uh, this is my wife, Selena. And uh, we, we're with our friend, uh, Kevin, uh, who is in uh, the Navy here. So uh, I'm going to be sharing you uh, my testimony. And also, you'll be listening to my wife, uh, Selena's testimony later. So. Uh, I guess I'll be sharing my testimony uh, to, uh, what led me to my saving faith, uh, what the Lord used the uh, uh, circumstances in my life uh, para tawagin niya ako into saving faith. So there. Uh, in my past life, <clears throat> I felt I had the freedom to do whatever I want because I used to believe that I was in control of my life. Sinning without conscience, Uh, I was born and raised in a Catholic family. Uh, buong pamilya ko po, uh, Catholic ko, even me. Uh, going to Sunday Mass, listening to homily, pray, and then I believe that I am forgiven. Then Monday, Monday to Saturday, living a life of not caring about sin. Then on Sunday, I can just go back to church, listen to homily, pray, and ask for forgiveness. That was the cycle. As a basketball player, I treated basketball as my everything. It was literally my idol. I was literally obsessed with it that I should be the best. I should always win because success was always the goal. Worldly success. I honestly struggled with it sometimes but then. Then between 2018 and 2019, I tore my ACL in le twice in less than a year. The injury I feared the most when I was not a believer yet. It honestly crushed me, especially after my second surgery. I used to think that those injuries were the toughest things that I had to experience. Then the Lord used uh, Larry, uh, who was my teammate uh, in NLEX before, in, to invite me to one of the Bible studies he led. Then that same day, uh, I attended a Bible study, the same, the same thing you have uh, in, uh, every Wednesday. Uh, and hearing the gospel about faith in Christ and repentance of sins did not have a big effect on me yet. So Larry, my former teammate, and BJ, my Bible, uh, Bible study leader now, uh, we had a Bible study before every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, sitting in as a Bible study group also. Of course, uh, it was the pandemic. Uh, I really see the pandemic as a blessing in my life because uh, those uh, time that I had before that, uh, that really grew my love and knowledge for the Lord. It was probably August or, or September of 2020. Uh, the Bible study leader uh, of that group, he was his name was Kuya Vance, was teaching upon God's sovereignty for for the whole month. So God is sovereign over all things. Made me realize that God allowed those trials in my life, like my injury, my ACL injuries, because the Lord knows what's good for me and definitely used it for His glory. It was after two ACL injuries I can confidently say that it was one of the biggest blessings in my life because those two devastating injuries led me to Christ. God is really sovereign that He used afflictions to call me to saving faith. Then come 2022, as a young believer, my faith was tested right away. The Lord knew that my wife Selena is my weakness, seeing her struggle, sad or even really cry affects me selena had a miscarriage at the start of the year and a few months after she was diagnosed with cancer because of a complication from her miscarriage then a few weeks after her last shot of chemo tested positive for covid then that same day later in the afternoon boiling water burned her legs that caused second degree burn that made us go back and forth regularly for a couple of months in the hospital we talked to the <clears throat> guards there, nurses there, even the parking attendants of those two hospitals that we've been to because we were literally there almost the entire year. But the Lord is faithful, faithful in our lives. As I was writing this, I remembered a chapter in the book of Joshua, chapter 4, the 12 memorial stones from Jordan. As I remember the year 2022, I will always remember it as a memorial stone in our the lives of me and Selena. It is a reminder to myself of God's faithfulness. I praise God for His grace, mercy, and faithfulness because I honestly don't deserve everything I have right now. Even in my career achievements that I make, it was all God who enabled me to do that. 
I thank the Lord for sending His one and only Son to die on the cross to save me of my sins. I praise the Lord for enabling me to leave my old self behind and allowing me to walk the Christ-like way. As Romans 8.28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. In God's providence, God orchestrates every event in life, even suffering, temptation, and sin, to accomplish both our temporal and eternal benefit. Thank you. So, hi everyone. My name is Selena, and I will about I'm about to share to you my story. Okay. So. Exactly one year, um, well, about a year and a half ago today, Christmas Eve of 2021, I wanted to give my husband, Kevin, what I thought would be the best Christmas gift I could give, the news that I was pregnant. So I recycled the box from the Parker pens that were given to us a few months earlier as a wedding gift, and I replaced the contents with my positive pregnancy test. I presented it to him, and when he opened it, he immediately knelt down and worshipped to God. No words can describe the joy we felt. However, weeks after that joyous morning, we learned that the pregnancy did not progress. I went through a DNC procedure, and though heartbroken, we submitted to the will of our wise father. Echoing the sentiments beautifully expressed by Job, the Lord gave and the Lord took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Little did we know it was only the beginning. After my DNC, I felt oddly weak. I had not stopped bleeding and I was immensely nauseous. Initially, my doctors thought it was just hormones. More tests were ran and two months later, Results showed I had developed a very rare form of cancer, which resulted to extremely elevated levels of HCG as a result of a tumor. Back then, I was very much shaken. I stepped out of the doctor's clinic, fell into Kevin's arms, and repeatedly cried, Help me, God. Cancer was my biggest fear, and to have it in my 20s was a huge shock for me. But looking back, the Lord faithfully answered my cry for help in more ways than I can count. I began my chemotherapy and with it all sorts of complications arose. Elevated liver enzymes, unexplainable fever, low white and red blood cells, low hemoglobin, low sodium, rashes, and many more. I also had a very bad burn accident post-chemo that had me frequenting the wound care center twice a week since my body was not well enough to recover it from the wounds on its own. Yet through the grueling trials and excruciating pains in between, the Lord faithfully carried me through. He enabled me to repeat verses to myself as the medic medications were administered, as tests were ran, as we waited in hospital halls. He reminded me of His sovereignty, goodness, and wisdom. These truths became my lifeline, especially on nights I would sinfully beg the Lord to take me in my sleep. I am grateful for the countless times He met me amidst my pain. I began to realize that to pray for His will to be done is to pray for His goodness to be shown. This truth brought, brought me great peace a peace I would not have known apart from knowing Christ and what He has done for me on the cross in Calvary. And though all these seemed terrible, I knew and I had to believe it was all for good. After all, don't we Christians walk by faith, not by sight? And so by His grace alone, I firmly recognize that there is immense love in and behind all of my sufferings. Growing up, I often heard and read that the Lord is faithful. But this time around, I have tried and tested His promises to be true. He really knows the way we take. He indeed disciplines those whom He loves. His mercy truly is new every morning. And though cancer may be such grave news, believers can still suffer with joy and peace. For ultimately, we have still been rescued from the worst reality. 
which is an eternity in hell without God. But we who believe in Him as our Lord and Savior and turn our backs on our sins would one day fellowship with Him in maximum love, joy, and peace for all eternity, where He will wipe away every tear and mourning and sadness and pain. So for the believer, the best is yet to come, guaranteed. If not in this lifetime, in the next. It has been a year and a half since we started this journey of losing an unborn child, of being diagnosed with cancer, of suffering agonizing burns. For a moment there, I wasn't so sure I'd make it alive. Yet here I stand healthy and well. Isn't this a testament of his unfathomable goodness, his matchless grace? Looking back, it isn't my sufferings I would remember most. Rather, I'd remember his grace, his goodness, his joy, filling up every crevice of my brokenness. His sovereignty is the pillow of comfort I lay my head on. His atoning work on the cross, my eternal hope, my calm amidst the storms. Alleluia, the Lord is good, and in him I have found rest. Actually, the reason why I invited them here, or rather, last Wednesday while listening to the testimony of Brother Kevin and Sister Selina, I, I was reminded about, you know, the message of the Lord today. I was uh, in deep meditation. I could not continue with the series because next week and the next next week will not be here. So I was kind of like getting the cue uh, of the message from their testimony. Because a while ago, our topic is centered, focused about on, on the affliction. And again, Psalm 119 verse 75 says, um, In his faithfulness, God afflicted me. And again, as I was saying, how could a good God allow affliction to us? Haven't he promised that he will be giving us abundant life. Where's the blessed life amidst this trouble? But again, I like what she said a while ago, or they said a while ago, it is through affliction that he purifies us, he sanctifies us. We might not have the same experience that this couple have, but we also have our own share of afflictions in this life. Whether this is a direct attack from the enemy, whether it is a constant struggle with sin or anything else that would make that would break our hearts well the good news is christ said in this world we will have tribulation but rejoice for i have overcome the world thank you very much uh, brother kevin sister selena we are so blessed you having with us thank you for gracing our our fellowship with your testimony but before i end this it's not just the testimony that really blesses us. It's the man behind the testimony. And that is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason why they are still standing, the reason why they have reason to believe, reason to walk, reason to live, it's because of what Christ did for them. You know, they are popular in our country in the sense that they are, they are sports celebrities, Brother Kevin plays basketball. Uh, Sister Selena plays basketball. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Sister Selena is a sportscaster. You know what I'm saying? But in the limelight of their career, God called them. And it is so hard for, for people like them to open their hearts to Jesus. But I remember the passage that says, God is not a respecter of any person. God touched their hearts. And draw them to Jesus Christ. Message of the gospel that says Christ died and Christ rose again, and Christ died for their sins. I remember the passage that says, But God demonstrates his love toward us 
that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the song says, Oh, what great salvation He brings, He gives. I know in the afterlife, in the, in the coming years, all of us who understand the gospel, who are recipients of this grace of God, will all together be reconciled with the Father and the Son, and we will all gloriously lift up the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And again, the passage says, Whatever we are struggling here, I'm paraphrasing the passage, whatever we are struggling here, it's nothing compared to what we will have in glory. Friends, God is preparing a glorious inheritance that no, not, no one can touch, even the evil one. And we are looking forward to that. So while we are still on earth, let us be faithful. Paul says, walk in a manner worthy of our call. And that is what our dear brother and sister here are doing. They're continually sharing the love of Jesus and they're living testament of the gospel that saves. You are the